In this dispensation of transparency and integrity, a group of activists, including the convener concerned Nigerians, submitted a signed petition calling for the investigation of the source of money conveyed in bullion vans to the home of Ashiwaju Ahmed Tinubu during the 2019 presidential election. And President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has called for the inclusion of anti-corruption courses in schools' curricula to reduce the menace of corruption in the country. Will this really solve the menace of corruption? This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Izewike. Very glad you could join us. Now, a video showing bullion vans entering into the residence of Ashiwaju Tinubu is apparently still under discussion as the convener of concerned Nigerian and among um, other activists have submitted a petition asking for the investigation of the source of money conveyed in bullion vans to the home of the former governor of Lagos State on the eve of the 2019 presidential election. The petition was addressed to the EFCC acting chairman, Ibrahim Magu. However, journalists were manhandled by operatives of the EFCC. Joining me to discuss this is the political analyst, Lulu Elegbe. Thank you very much for joining Thanks us. For What's your reaction? The petition has been sent out and uh, alleged molestation. Well, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a couple of things. First and foremost, um, this petition came about because I think a few days ago, um, an EFCC spokesperson, I think it was, uh, made a comment that I think some people had, were talking about the bullion van thing. Um, this has been going on since just before the elections. And the EFCC spokesperson made a comment saying, well, the reason they haven't investigated it is because no one has um, signed a petition. a petition or written a petition to the EFCC on the issue, so the EFCC can't do anything about it, which is true. And so Mr. Adeoju and his friends decided, OK, we'll take up the challenge, we'll write the petition, and we'll see what happens. Now, here's where I have an issue with how I think many of these activists do things. Um, they're well within their rights. They're Nigerian citizens. So they're well within their rights to write a petition um, about anything to the FCC. But they, I don't understand why there needs to be a whole ceremony, like you said, about why, about signing or writing a petition or delivering a petition to the EFCC. You can make exactly the same point without giving it that kind of almost a confrontational attitude about it. The EFCC is more likely to listen to you if you submit this the same way any other normal Nigerian would. But when you do it this way, you go with a crowd of people, you address a press conference, you're just, as far as I'm concerned, you're just you're adding an unnecessary element of controversy to it, which I don't think is necessary. If what you're really trying to do is to get to the bottom of the bullion van thing, if that's really what they're trying to do, uh, it's, you it's said something that opinion. piqued my interest. You you sure. said um, it is the. Uh, writing a petition is the way to go. Uh, but there was a conversation mm. uh, earlier this month, actually, between uh, Shege Ling, a popular social media activist, okay. uh, and the Twitter, uh, Twitter handle manager uh, for EFCC. Mm. And it was back and forth about the Yahoo Yahoo boys and they cited the section of their act that mm. allows them to, you know, investigate anybody who shows signs of, mm. you know, wealth that they cannot explain. really properly yeah. explain. Mm. And then um, he took them on and said, this man has um, wealth that seems to defy explanation because bullion vans are expected um, at you know banks and other such locations, the CBN office and all of that. So mm. would you say that the EFCC actually needed a petition to well, take a move, to investigate? Nobody's saying a crime has mm. been committed, but something doesn't look right. Isn't that their point of view? Yeah, but... You're right in the sense that the only thing, so EFCC's job is they have a, they have a huge task, and it's not only it's not only maybe I should have specified that it's not only a petition that allows them to carry out an investigation or to start an investigation. So if, like you said, there is a, there's suspicion that um, someone has committed fraud, for example, of course they will investigate. 
But in this case, I, I mean, this, has, this is a conversation that has been going on since the election. And we all know that during the election, there were, there were so many things going on with regards to money changing hands and all sorts of things going on. This was probably maybe the most high profile one. But again, maybe putting on my, law, my lawyer's hat, you see a bullion van or two bullion van, vans driving into someone's compound. A lawyer could, would argue in court that you don't know what's in the bullion van. Yes, a bullion van normally would carry cash, but there's no proof. There's proof that the bullion vans enter the compound. There's no proof A, that there was cash in the bullion vans. There was no, there's no proof that when they go into the, into the compound, someone, people were lifting cash out. There's, no, there's absolutely no proof of that. So even if this goes to court, Okay, we saw two bullion vans driving into his compound, and? But that is the reason why an investigation is required. Don't you think so? Yeah, but what, what I mean, don't, don't get me I'm, I'm trying to understand what is it exactly that they're supposed to be investigating here. You saw two bullion vans driving into the house. We don't know what they were doing there. We don't know if there was money in there. We don't know where the bullion vans came from. We don't know how a private citizen has access to bullion vans. Those are good questions. My point is, because this thing happened, um, I think, in February or so, early yeah, this year yeah. anyway, where are those bullion vans today? I don't know. Where, at the time they drove into his compound, did anybody, did anybody take pictures and see that there was actually cash? Because if they were, for all you know, for all you and I know, there could have been, there could have been two empty, bullion vans. I don't know if that's true. You don't know if that's true. In the absence of proof that, or in the absence of proof that there was money in those bullion vans, I'm not quite sure yeah, that, what that, the, the court EFCC, would decide, the, the, to be the, Okay, um, I guess we'll come back to this sure. issue again. Okay. Uh, but let me just make a point here that the EFCC mm -hmm. is to investigate. Absolutely. And if they find any wrongdoing they will prosecute i agree with that. yes i'm not disagree with that i'm just saying what is it they're investigating right now you're, you're investigating two bullion vans that happened more than six months ago so where do you start okay let me put it this way a bullion van going into a private compound is not a crime right okay so first of all there's that a bullion van going into a, a private compound with a lot of cash in it raises questions obviously okay that let's let's we'll come okay. back to that okay, we'll still sure. come back to it but let's look at the treatment of the activists okay, who sure. went to submit that petition mm -hmm. they allege that some efcc officials tried to confiscate the cameras of journalists who were mm. there and some of them were rough handled, so to mm. speak, before they eventually submitted their petition. Would you say that these officials of the EFCC that behaved this way were not aware of the what some people are saying is a dare mm. for people to write a petition for investigation to be carried um, out. Will you say they are unaware that these people were performing a legitimate um, I'm sure they were responsibility? Aware. I'm sure they were aware, but the, I think the issue with our security agencies generally, including the anti-corruption ones, is they are necessarily heavy-handed when it comes to anything to do with civil protest or um, civic rights or civil rights. Because as much as I disagree with the methods that Mr. Adeoja and his friends used, they still have a right to be where they were. They had a right to hold a press conference. They had a right to write those petitions. And they had a right to go to the EFCC office to submit the petitions. So the idea of manhandling them for doing things that they, the Constitution actually guarantees their right to do is wrong, in my opinion. At the, having said that, though, I'm always of the opinion that where, something, where you can get something done without controversy, there's really no need to go the controversy way. And I, and I think this is my issue with the way a lot of these activists carry out certain um, activities that they do. Because if Mr. Deoju, for example, wrote um, a petition to the EFCC, there are channels to submit these petitions. It's not, it's not, that, it's not that complicated. But obviously, he wanted the he wanted the public. Um, I, I don't know what the right word is. He wanted the public spectacle about this for whatever reason. 
And again, when you do that, the only thing you're doing is you're inviting chaos, you're inviting these kinds of manhandling situations by the security forces, because you and I know they will do that. I'm not saying it's right, but it can very easily be avoided. They didn't need to go. I mean, you could have you could have submitted a petition without going there with a crowd of people. You could have done that without calling a press conference while submitting it. It's to me, it's unnecessary. It's really not necessary. Let's go back to the bullion sure. ban since we're talking about Mr. Ade, okay. your Jew. Okay, he said something during uh, the process. He said that. Um, Bola Tinubu is now a private citizen sure. and a private citizen should not be seen ideally with a bullion van. Who says? Who says that? But th that's my point. That, that's a, if does I, he if, have a point there? No, he doesn't because when you say private citizen should not be, is there, show me a law that says, I would love for someone to show me a law that says a private citizen cannot have access to to a bullion van. I haven't seen if there even it, exists. It's not, I so, seen it's not it. a common picture. I mean, it's, it's not, not a it's common not, picture common, that we see not, in this country. Agreed, but it's not illegal. That's my issue. It's not illegal. The it, it, where it raises questions. Okay, let me put it this way: If you heard that um, two bullion vans drove into Dangote's compound, for example, it wouldn't shock anybody because you know. His, you know, um, his net worth and those sorts of things. Everybody understands that. So it wouldn't you, raise you, that. You are basically saying that there is need for people no, excuse no, no, me, no, I'm just to be saying, shocked. You said Dangote, we know he's a filthy rich man. Yeah. Um, Tinubu, we also know he is rich. But, yeah, but people are expect, thinking so, that. So what exactly is the issue? Because, okay, you saw, you, <laughs> you saw two bullion vans driving into the, the compound of a private citizen. Um, the point I'm making is that there's nothing illegal about, about that. it. Okay, let's move on and, and look at whether EFCC will take on this issue. They they do have, I think, a section of the, uh, the petition that was sent, a section of it, seven subsection 1B of the EFCC Establishment Act of 2004 gives the Commission the power to investigate properties of any person um, mm. that appears to the Commission that a person's lifestyle and extent of the properties are not justified yeah. uh, by his source of income. Sure. Will the EFCC investigate, do you think? Now they have a petition. Before now they said they didn't have any petition? And well, they will. Whether <laughs> they will. They are law bound to investigate. Whether that investigation goes anywhere is, a, is a, that's a separate that's a separate question. They will they have to investigate now, because um, there's there's the fact that well the law compels them to do so if they if they have those suspicions or if somebody sends a petition someone has sent a petition now, so they do have to investigate. But I personally don't think it's going to go anywhere because I like this I mean based on the points I've made. Earlier, which yeah. is, I mean, a bullion van going into someone's house isn't illegal. But there's something, um, I mean, I must mention, as uh, as absurd as you may think some of these concerns mm. are, this thing happened during the election period. Sure. And people are saying this might have a bearing to why the, the heightened speculation um, as per having the bullion van there. Would you say that is misplaced or no, the significance, no. uh, let me rephrase that, the significance of all this questioning might not have come up if the timing of the appearance of those bullion van were different? That I agree with 100%. The timing of that obviously raises questions. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like um, I don't understand that. When you have two bullion vans driving into the compound of probably the most powerful politician in the country around the time of elections will raise certain questions, no doubt. I, I have no doubt about that. But raising questions, raising suspicions, and doing something illegal are not the same thing. That's I think that's my that's what I'm trying to get. Well, is he, doesn't he, he does have a responsibility? He does. I agree with that. I mean, Tunubu himself now doesn't he have the responsibility mm -hmm. to behave differently, mm -hmm. not to have be, knowing fully well as a citizen of the world mm -hmm. that this will generate questions yeah. without doing it so blatantly? Some people would say. Well, was it doing it blatantly? I wouldn't. I'm not sure because. I mean, it's his house. So um, the crowd of, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not even sure where they got the pictures of bullion vans. I'm not sure who took the pictures. I'm not sure who was watching the house. But I would, I would argue that it wasn't doing it blatantly because we see the bully, we see bullion vans up and down. I mean, not, I'm not saying driving into private compounds, but 
My point is that um, perceptions matter, and especially in the lead up to what was a very tense election, those perceptions could be very dangerous because then people start to say things like, uh, maybe this was what um, they, they used money for X, Y, Z, and all these things. It raises those questions. I agree with that. It will raise those questions. And so I would think that people in positions of power and authority should, should try as much as possible not to allow, because a lot of the time, perceptions are more, perception is more, is more real to a lot of people than actual reality. So where, you, where it's possible to avoid certain negative perceptions, especially the ones that have dire consequences, we should act, especially people in leadership positions, should try to avoid them. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, though, I still come back to my original point, which is his thinking might have been whatever was in the bullion vans, uh, maybe he, I don't know if it's possible to rent them, I don't know, but he's done that, so done whatever it was to access bullion vans, and they brought them to his house. You could, he could make the argument that he's doing that as a private citizen. That, and I'm not aware of any law that stops him from doing that. So that could be his own argument, that yes, I'm a leader, I have a responsibility, but at the same time, I'm a private citizen. So there are certain things I want to do for myself, and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to let what people will say stop Perception. me from doing certain things. That, that could be his own argument as well. OK, um, this is not the only time the conversation about investigating um, Ashiwaju has come up um, last year, I think mm. around September, the PDP came up and said um, f uh, a company that um, his name was linked to uh, was accused of fraudulent. It's just an accusation. And then we have the Boulogne van situation. Now, there mm. are two school of thought. One is saying, as is usual, that there is a political undertone, a witch hunt, so to speak, going on. And then on the flip side, there are those who are saying that I mean, do we have two laws for um, people in this country? One for those um, fighting corruption on the one side of the party, and for those that are not supporting uh, the current administration on, on the other hand. What do you say to that? Well, to be fair to Ashiraju, the allegations of corruption have dogged him since, as far as I can remember. I think he was... Um, he was taken before the CC, the Code of Conduct Tribunal, at some point, and he was acquitted. Um, so there have been these allegations for a long time. Many of them have been investigated, especially when the PDP was in power, um, because, I mean, they had every reason to want to investigate him. So I would have thought that if they had proof, actual proof of wrongdoing, it would have been easier to do that when there was a PDP, uh, when PDP was in charge of the federal government. But if they weren't able to do that then, even when they had, um, they pretty much had power with them, I find it I find it a bit hard to see how they would be able to do it now, because the reality is anybody can make an accusation, and like I said, I think Ashwaju has been accused, God knows how, how for how long for for as as far as I can remember, to be honest, but. Allegations are allegations. It doesn't, uh, there's the innocent until proven, proven guilty. guilty. And I, 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 just, I want to believe that if there was a smoking gun somewhere that Ashwaju is involved in X, Y, Z, he has a lot of political enemies. They would have found it by now and they, they would have tried to make his life as miserable as possible because it's in their interest to do that. If, I mean, if, if he's done something illegal, yes, obviously he should face the law. But the fact is, they haven't found any proof of that. So these allegations will probably go on. And whether or not it leads anywhere is anybody's guess, I think. A funny question. The people say that some of these activists, mm. and they now put the quote in activist, that they might be sponsored to come out and you know make these petitions mm. public. But on the flip side, you also know that there are some activists who might not be but, so to speak, sure. to influence anything. But would you give credence to such arguments that sometimes these petitions by groups that say they're activists and acting in the best interest of Nigerians mm. are actually sponsored individuals who have some sort of agenda to attain? I would believe that. I mean, and I say that advisedly. I say that without having any proof of it. But it, just by being able to analyze the political terrain and the way things happen in Nigeria, I, it's not something that would surprise me. If I found proof of that today, it wouldn't surprise me because 
sometimes the way, the way some of these um, petitions, some of these protests, the way they spring up from nowhere, they seem, a lot of them seem too organized to be just a spur of the moment thing, or it's, it's organized, it's, um, it's a bit too structured for something that is just, okay, a couple of activists have seen something they're not happy with, they go and protest. Um, sometimes these protests cost money. You, um, people come in, they have to carry placards, some wear t-shirts. So if, um, if someone tells me that they're being sponsored by, I, I, I wouldn't doubt it, to be honest, but I, again, I say that without having proof of that, but I would absolutely believe that, that it is possible. They are moving from social media. Some persons are crediting this petition to the mm. spate between, um, uh, is it spark now, between the um, Shagelink and to, um, EFCC Twitter handler. Mm. Uh, some are saying that we're always accusing people on social media of mere talk. Mm -hmm. Now that they've moved the talk from social media to real life, they don't seem to be getting the required support. Support from whom, though? Because... They've, from the, the same EFCC that... Well, they submitted their... But, my, but that's the point I was making earlier, that these guys could have submitted the petition without all the song and dance that went with it. They, they didn't need to do that. So as far as support from EFCC goes, the only support that EFCC can give them is to receive the petition and then investigate, which, as far as I'm aware, they are doing. But when you now add all the other drama to it, the press conference and the activism and the demonstration you've submitted the petition do you but really need all sometimes, that? but sometimes you know we live in a country where you say if you don't you know do all the extra work actions might not be taken but now that it's in the media space maybe um yeah, efcc but, will be pressured yeah, to but pay guys better have, attention well not necessarily because, look these guys have a public profile deja deoju is a very popular activist in nigeria all he has to do all he had to do was submit the petition, go on social media. You can even have, I'm sure they have some sort of receipt or whatever. Go on social media, post it there, start talking about it. You could do some sort of countdown timer. Okay, it's been two days since we submitted, we haven't heard anything. There's so many, there's a, there's a range of options been. they could have used that did not include going there to cause that kind of controversy and they ended up being manhandled. They could have done it in a different way, in, 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 a, in a very different way. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with Thank us. You. All right, we'll go on a short break now. Battling corruption from childhood is up next. Stay with us.